Good morning dolls and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today we're going to get to work on these beds that are for the boys room in the attic. Now I have this set of bunk beds but I actually took the little wooden pins out of them that caused them to stack and I decided that I would sand one of them to really make it look aged and the other one I was going to paint it black. So after sanding some of the shine off of the first one, I added a couple generous coats of black matte acrylic to the second bed. Now while allowing that coat of black to dry on the other bed, I went back to sanding the original bed. And after I sanded so much, I decided to take out my acetone to see if I can remove some of that shine a little bit better, which it did work out pretty well. So now I have a black bed and a brown bed that's a little bit distressed. Now I'm going to go ahead and size out a template for my mattress base. Now I did do a previous bed, which is the one for Miss Maisie, and it was a little bit bigger. Now these are twin beds, and in with the other bed I used a wooden base because it was already attached, but these beds didn't have any mattresses or a base, so I'm using a really firm piece of cardboard. Now I did cut it to fit inside the bed rails, and make it fit nice and snug before I add the foam padding on top and the fabric. And I did duplicate this process for the second bed. Now after I had the two bases ready for my two twin beds, I decided to go ahead and create the mattresses with a fitted sheet on top. Now some people make what I call a raw mattress, but when I make my mattresses dolls, I go ahead and make it look as though the fitted sheet is already attached. Now in the double bed that I made for Miss Maisie, I did use this one inch thick foam, which I attempted to use for these twin beds. So I cut it the same size as the cardboard template or base that I had prepared. And after cutting it, I went to size it or fit it on the bed and realized that the mattress was way too thick for the profile of this bed, that the doll would be sitting above the headboard if I used this one inch thick foam. So this is really not gonna work for these beds, for the profile of these beds and for the look that I'm trying to achieve. So I dug through my foam scraps and found a thinner piece of foam. And this works better. You can still see the design of the bed. Now it's a little bit short, so I'm going to have to kind of shim and splice the foam for the bed. But it'll be all covered up under the fitted sheet, so it won't be a problem. You won't even notice it. But I did cut the shim piece pretty tight so that the fit will be nice and full. And I did the same thing for the second bed. Now, dolls, after I got the mattresses and the pads all cut out, I decided I really didn't like the black paint on the second bed. So I began to remove it with lacquer thinner. Now, dolls, I do use acetone um, to remove the shine. But Daddy told me a long time ago that if I was trying to remove paint, that I should use lacquer thinner. But he left out the fact that lacquer thinner would dissolved latex gloves so yeah i guess next time i'll use rubber gloves so i had to ball up the gloves to hold on to the cloth that i was removing the paint with but it did work very well so just so you know dolls lacquer thinner strips paint stain and shine and it will dissolve latex gloves now dolls here i am just adding a little tacky glue to the mattress base and just adding my foam so that can dry before I begin to add my fitted sheet and you see me adding that little shim piece. Now I did have to cut an additional layer for this particular mattress because the foam was really really thin and again it did not match the profile of the bed properly. So dolls, I'm just leaving this here to show you that sometime you'll just have to make additional modifications depending on what materials you have and the look or desired result you're trying to achieve. So dolls, don't ever get discouraged. Work with what you have and keep in mind it's the visible results that matter. There are some things no one will ever see unless somebody picks this bed apart at some point. 80 years from now, no one will know that I spliced together the foam for my mattresses. All they'll see is a lovely set of twin beds. Now I found this nice striped remnant in my bundle of fabric and I thought it looked really nice. It's not bright like the red that I used 
for the insides of the pillows. Now I will leave a link in the description for the pillows. Now dolls, you actually weren't supposed to see me wrap this particular mattress. This was the one that didn't come out quite so neat, but it worked. I got done. It was good. It fit the bed really great. It looked really cute. No one will ever know. How will they know? And there is the second one. And you can see one is sealed up at the bottom and the other one is not quite sealed up. But if it'll make you more comfortable, I'll go ahead and use this little scrap to cover up that piece of cardboard that's peeking through on the bottom of the mattress. <laughs> Now, dolls, it's time to make the blankets. Now, I have this really nice piece of quilt fabric. I really like it a lot. Now, the one thing I do like is that the squares are really small. What I don't like is that the tones in the quilted part are really, really bright. And I think they're too bright for the look that I'm trying to achieve. So I'm going to use the underside or the wrong side as the featured part of my project. So here I'm just simply adding tacky glue to the perimeter of the fabric. Now you definitely want to allow ample time for your little quilt seams to dry good and solid before you turn it right side out. Now that my comforter or quilt is turned right side out, I'm folding in that open seam so that I can seal it up and close off the edge of my comforter. And again, I'm adding my tacky glue to that part and tapping it with my iron so that it'll help or encourage the glue to cure and dry faster and flattening the seams so that it'll look natural and not puffy like a pillow. And there's my quilt. And so it's actually reversible dolls, but I will be using the more simple side. I'm not gonna use the quilted side because again, I still think it's a little bit bright but I'm adding my aluminum foil to protect my mattress from the moisture of the water and glue solution. Now dolls, I use tacky glue, but you could use Elmer's or any type of PVA glue to get the same result. And you see I'm applying it with a brush just to give a little bit more control. And after the fabric is good and saturated, I begin to shape it, trying to make it look like some little boys had just kicked it off, jumped out of bed, and left it. Now, dolls, this does take a little practice. And don't worry, worst case scenario, if you shape it in a shape that you don't like, just re-wet it and try it again. There is no such thing as wrong. It's just whether you like it or not. Now you can work on it or play with it as long or as much as you want. And you do want to secure your folds with pins to help your fabric hold its shape while it's drying. Now, if you feel unsure on how to produce wrinkles, you may want to look at inspiration pictures, dolls. I raised three children, so I'm definitely clear on what messy children's beds look like. So... So I went on to add aluminum foil to my second bed, did the exact same process, except with this bed, I didn't want it to be quite as messy because this is an older child. So I made the wrinkles and ruching a little bit more subtle to indicate that this child may be a little bit older and not quite as messy as the younger child. So dolls, here we are at least 24 hours later. The fabric is very, very dry, nice and firm. I actually think I made my solution um, heavier than I normally do because this is quite rigid. It's way more rigid than my other comforter that I made for Miss Maisie's bed, which is okay, but definitely be aware the more glue you use, the firmer or harder your finished result will be. Now, dolls, I really want to encourage you to really lean into your details when you're doing your dollhouse miniature scenes or designs because it's the details that add the life to them. So the pillows are slightly different, even though the beds are almost identical. I did do things slightly different to, to give distinction to the beds. So the neater bed belongs to an older child. The messier bed belongs to the younger child. And I'll add different accessories into the room, into the setting to enhance the distinctions and differences. But I'm really pleased at the way this turned out. Now, dolls, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.